What is happening, guys? Dinya from Untraceable Fishing. Yeah, once again with Don from Bull Moria Fishing Tackle. Welcome to, to Tackle, Tackle Tuesday. Tuesday. So, Don, I see a huge variety of all things shiny, glowy, fleshy, lighty. I don't know what else you want to call yeah, it. Yeah, tonight, guys, we're going to talk about color. Um, a lot of guys get impact on what color lure they must have. A lot of manufacturers have got these cool things like glow in the dark. Do they actually work? And we're going to look at some cool Kariki braid from Shimano, which has got color changing as it goes. And we've got a nice headlamp we're going to look at, and some paddle tails, and some spoons, and bucktails, and that. Just talking about color, like what are I think thoughts on it, and I think it does influence angling to quite a large degree. Hundred percent. Okay, guys. So glow in the dark is quite an interesting thing. Uh, a lot of manufacturers make big deals about on their websites and that, and I did quite a lot of research and homework, and there's very little research that shows that a glow in the dark lure at night or a glow in the dark hook at night actually catches fish. A um, bit of research on, on the squid on our coastline here yeah, and the fish, there's nothing that glows that's bait. Correct. So we've got to kind of take it a little bit like a pinch of salt, but there is a reason why they're popular and why they work. Okay. And uh, we'll, we'll get into that shortly. When you're looking at a lure, what, what's, what's your main, why, why do you grab a color? Why do you grab a shape? What's the... Uh, depending on the difference, I think a lot of things would... You, a lot of angles also like I do, you, what visually attracts you, you're not really thinking what could visually attract a fish. So you're looking for something, listen, depending where you are, something that's shiny, sparkly. Yeah, yeah for sure. Pretty. I mean, I, I came from like a freshwater bass I mean, trout fly fishing background. So choosing your lure, shape, size, yeah. color, it's always been part of the, the yeah. knowledge base. But I think the golden rule of pretty much any lure, regardless of freshwater, saltwater, the fish has got to see it. Attraction. There's got to be that initial, hey, that's food. I should check 100%. that out. I want to go and grab that. After that, things like swim pattern does, I mean, how many times does a Leary cruise up behind a, a plug and look at it and just turn, turn away and reject second. it? Yeah. So that can also sometimes be your fault as an angler, you're not working the rod properly. Yeah. But that initial attraction to a large degree is visible based. Yeah. It's only talk color yet. Yeah. It must be visible. So that's step number one. You want a the fish absolutely. to be attracted to it. Attracted to it. And I think that's where the misnomer of glow in the dark comes in. Yeah. Um, the glow in the dark items you'll see in our video yeah, actually glow pretty well. If you charge them up there with a bright headlamp or during the daylight, they glow, grow bright. Yeah. And um, you know, and as we go normal saltwater lure angling, you're casting um, something like the Skid of V has got a nice uh, little sheen to it, it literally, literally sends out like a bit of a mirror, bling bling, like a reflection, and that extends the range of the attraction of a lure. Correct. So it's sending a bit of a signal, ha, I'm here, I'm here, come chow me. And what happens in dirty water and deeper water if you're in, in deep sea type environment is that flash of the sunlight on a lure starts decreasing. Yeah, correct. And that's where glow in the dark works a charm. So the guys doing slow pitch digging, something like these Naomi's, you know, easier. They've got a very strong pattern of glow in the dark on the one side, plain on the other. This side you'll see is quite reflective. Holographic. So almost, holographic, yeah. they call yeah. it. Um, most of them are similar to that. And when that's sinking down in a bright column, it's sending nice little flashes. But as it's hitting deeper water, it's got a glow, and that allows fish to pick it up. Correct. So murky, deep water, certainly good, good attraction. One of the reasons why something like a squid rex would work quite nicely as well. Yeah. Obviously, it looks like a squid, but a little subtle glow in the dark certainly extends that range of attraction. I mean, you, you often cast in, you don't, you don't always land on top of a fish. You're sometimes five or ten meters away. Yeah. So the further attraction you go, no, big deal. Or even more vertically in the water column. It could Absolutely, be yeah. No, they're, they're, you want the thing to see the lure. That's rule number one. But besides lures, what, what are the glow in the dark things? Uh, Oh. I, I see. I see. We've got beads. Do you, do you fish with glow in the dark beads? I do. I'd, I'd not particularly they glow in the dark, but uh, 
I think those are the ones that just normally bar. No, no, for yeah, sure. And, running and I think a lot of guys like the light sticks. I enjoy light sticks. Um, it's, 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 it's quite fascinating, the guys fishing the points were shared at night. You check your little glow sticks out there. It's like a disco sometimes. It does, a bit, but bleed, bleed. Your head. I think the main point is to actually see what's happening to your bait. Yeah, correct. So you've got an attraction. Um, these light sticks are very popular. You get them in different effective ranges, like 5, 10, 50 meters. So you can see them from further away, correct. obviously. And it's nice to know what's happening to your bait. Um, a lot of guys as well, if they're fishing in a boat, like a light tackle boat environment, you get a clip you can put on the end of your rod so you can see when you're getting hit. Correct. I'd rather just go for a ratchet myself, but I mean, that, that can be a Yeah, like in the surf zone, especially if you're sitting back from your rods, uh, you might not always hear your ratchet, okay. depending on what the, yeah, yeah. so that could, could but then a lot of, Some guys go to the point of actually putting this down by the bait and thinking that, happen, yeah. thinking that the stick will attract. And I think that's a bit of an unproven, uh, you know, rumor versus reality, I think is still going to be... So there's no, no scientific theory to, to yeah, say absolutely. that's true. Yeah. There are quite a few hooks nowadays as well that are also glow in the dark. And it's, it's still unknown. They, they're certainly Correct. catching fish. Yeah. But whether they're catching more than a standard hook would kind of hard to prove. Impossible to prove. I no think. one's actually yeah. proven it. So let's see where they go. And then what, what about like other color? I know a lot of yeah. guys, the, the bluefish fishermen, they, they love a small float. Correct, yeah. Well, color, color choice? I particularly like the pink one for no particular reason. I just, in my eyes, I catch more bluefish on the pink one, but also no theory there, guys. Okay, uh, the interesting one is some guys are pedantic on this one. Like, really? they'll only go green. Or they'll buy a packet of this and they'll only use the pink ones and throw the other ones away. Okay. So they're very particular yeah. on color. Um, my brother's a bluefish fanatic and, and he likes his floaties. I must admit, in a weedy environment, they do lift your bait well. Correct. Whether the color's got anything to do with more, more catching more blues or not, you'll never know. I'm not quite sure. Yeah, you'll never, you'll never I, really I, know. I normally like those little, those little cork ones. Yeah. I found they actually float a bit better, so that's what I go with. Um, but an interesting one, it's a nice debate, and I think that will never end. You know, it's one of those ongoing ones, and we can never prove it. But then uh, we're, we're talking about lures and colors, and, you know, a lot of us throw lures, and uh, a lot of us can't afford, like, 20 of each lure. So buying your first couple of, like, bucktails, for instance, what colors do you start off with? What are the most popular? What, are, what works... And you've kind of got to follow everyone else's lead here because generally the top sellers are hopefully the top catchers. Top catchers, yeah. Um, you'll see here we've got a CRD, Shivistic, that, that's a typical redhead, white body. But almost for the Eastern Cape, eh? For Eastern Cape, yeah, but, yeah. but any, any, any lip lure or a parlor, um, that's pretty much going to go to. And whether it catches more fish or it catches more fish is not quite no, yeah. confirmed. Not set in stone. But from a angling perspective the color contrast is quite high so when you've got a red against a white it should give a higher attraction than just a plain white blue work so contrast is one thing that that can be be very good certainly a long distance attraction murkier water it probably makes a bit of sense sense correct yeah. um then we come across to the bucktails guys anything with a white in it you're pretty much on the money yeah. um a lot of guys like a dark tone with the white I'm quite keen on the tans and the chartreuse, which is a yellow. Correct. Um, in the fly fishing world, saltwater flies, if it hasn't got chartreuse in it, you don't know what you're doing. So yellow and white is, a good is a very popular. It's actually fairly natural. It's a, it's a tone that, it's got contrast, but it's not like if a subtle bonefish comes up in your fly, it doesn't go, I'm fake, I'm fake. You know, it's a little more realistic in its color tones. Um, and then you've also got your brighter tones, uh, your yellows and your oranges and that. In the freshwater environment, that's big for tiger fish. Correct. The oaks yeah. love that. That's there's the go-to. Orange go flash or red flash or something orange, like red. that. Um, and it must say red or orange. Those Correct. are the, yeah. the go-to colors, but a yellow as well. And then what do you think about the dark ones, though? They definitely work. Listen, uh, my personal experience, if I'm fishing not or darker conditions, I'd use a darker lure. That doesn't really sound yep. thing, but that, that's the way I prefer to do yeah, it. The, the whole theory was bright. Bright light, clean water, water. bright lure. Yes, yeah. Dull light, light. dull lure. Yes, yeah. But that's been like flipped in his head lately. I see that. The yeah. guys have been using the black ones in the tropics, Mozambique. In the clean, clean water. Clean tropical water. Blacks have been working a charm. But I think there, the contrast against that white sand, clear water, the fish see it from a mile away. It's also a thing that, don't know, like fish and humans, we don't see color the same way. No, we don't. We uh, don't. It's, it's actually, it's actually yeah. never been proven that they see colors the same way. Same way at all. It's probably just contrast. Yeah. So, large degree contrast. 
And that'll get us onto the pink. Pink is from your skidder V uh, to your paddle tails, like the cob factor there, to most of the Rapalas. Pink is kind of the go to color. Um, most folks have got at least one pink lure in their tackle box. No, I think okay? uh, it's a color that works, eh? Yeah. It seems to be a color that works. I know paddle tail wise, I'd say hands down, probably the most popular selling color. Yeah. I think every guy's throwing pink, like, got the pink lures out there and sit, uh, fishing with him. Okay, why? Why? That's the big question. Okay, why? why? Come on, we're doing answers here. Yeah. Yeah. I've heard, well, I've heard it, lots no, of theories, but uh, what's yours? Yeah. There is no, well, there is no, my, my, my particular theory on that, obviously it's a brighter color, so it's going to stay in the water. Your, oh. So when it comes to color, I don't want to get too technical, when it comes to colors, your blues and greens are going to fade away quicker. Yeah, you, 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 you're, on, you're, on, you're on the right track. Um, I used to do a lot of photography. I did some yes, underwater yeah. photography in my time. And as you go deeper, you tend to put a red fault on because your reds and pinks are the, Longer wavelengths. the colors that yeah. don't disappear as quickly. Um, so that lure in five meter deep water should be more contrasty than 100%. a paler lure yeah. would be. Um, and that is the scientific theory why pink works. Great. Um, the other thing which could totally flip on its head is kind of looks like a prawn or, and it's got that tone that kind of looks like a, a lot of your worms and I think even an orange of a red bait yeah. can be close to the pink if you look at the tone. I also so think it's, we, it's contrasting a lot of the background that you're fishing against. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. There's that contrast type work. So your know, pink is still very much a go-to color. But the question is, guys, some folks when it comes to paddle tails, they only throw pink. You think it's a good idea? Bad idea? No, I'd, I'd say change up. You know what I mean? Like, you don't have to have a huge variety of 30 colors. Yep. But I think two or three colors, you can kind of get away with it. Yeah. The, the weirdest thing is fish are extremely fussy. Um, some days, one lure or one color will work. The next day, something else works. And that goes according to what they're feeding on, how aggressive they are. Yeah. Um, sometimes, even in salt water, but fish, particularly fresh water, sometimes you just get hits from a, irritating a fish. Literally, it's it's in his zone. He doesn't like it. Yeah. He wants to chow it. Especially in bad luck bass in your sport. Bass, yeah, absolutely. Like and, but I think even saltwater fish, uh, a lot of these uh, walk the dog type lures going long, 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 over the oak. He's not always right. interested in eating a small thing. Yeah. It's just bugging him. It's getting back. Get, you know, get, out, get out of my house. Get out of my house, chase it away, and, and you're on. So, interesting theory. Um, spoons as well. I know a lot of the guys in KZN love a copper spoon, and you got your silver spoons. What's your take on that one? Well, listen, my days fishing growing up, uh, copper spoon, we used to enjoy it for or we used to brass spoons. They're pretty much a copper color. Yeah. For, for cob fishing off the surf and stuff like that at night. It's our preferred choice. Obviously, your silver spoon, a bit, bit more flash and things like that. So, I'd say fishing. My personal objective, fish, fishing deeper, fishing bottom, if you're pulling it along the sand and stuff. I'd yeah, prefer to use a copper spoon. I think, I think it's spoon. probably a little more subtle. Yeah. It's not quite as strong on the flesh. Right, yeah. So probably a little more natural. Yeah. Uh, I mean, uh, we've all seen mullet in the surf and that. They don't go shiny, shiny. shiny it's yes, it's yeah, a little more subtle. Kind of away as best they can. Yeah. 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 So um, maybe things like anchovy and smaller bait fish yeah. are sometimes very bright in the silver. But uh, yeah, it's, it's nice to have the option. Yeah. I think also in slightly lower light, that makes sense to yeah. be more subtle. Um, but not always. Yeah. Uh, we spoke about glow in the dark here earlier. Um, your surface plugs, uh, the glow in the dark, the luma greens have become very popular. Yeah. Okay. You can picture your first morning light, pre-dawn, four o'clock in the morning, and you, you're heading for the shad. If you've got something that's a little glow in the dark, a little oh, more they're visible, they're gonna come look what the it attraction is. is stronger. It's also, you know, the, initially the splash splash is the noise of it. But as the fish comes up, he's zoning in on that color. Yeah, correct. So that color can make a difference. Um, even in surface plugs. When it comes to walk the dog, what do you think of color there? Do you think color is as important in a walk the dog lure? Listen, I'd say lighter colors would work the dog lure, walk in the dog lure. Being a surface lure, it's a, in my perspective, fish is looking up, he's not looking against black and uh, those type of backgrounds. So yeah, that's, that's my perspective. I, I'm, I'm a little bit different on it, I'll yeah. be honest. I, I'm going to criticize a Rapala that doesn't happen every day. Skiddy V's got an amazing Very good lure action. Yeah. But if you think about it as a grunt or something like that, you're actually seeing it as a silhouette from a technical yeah. So the bottom, in my theory, should be dark. I want that silhouette to be as strong as okay. possible. Why I like a pink or an orange or a red or a really bright color is you can actually monitor the action of your lure. You can so easily track it better. You're standing 30, 40 meters away and you're making sure I've got to walk the dog and it's zigzagging nicely, not coming in too fast. Spending yeah. more time in the zone. Okay, it so, makes sense. So having your lure visible, even like a, even like the the black uh, bucktail, yeah, in a, in a in tropical the, environment, yeah. 
you can kind of see what your lure is doing yeah. better. And th that's important. Yeah. You need to know what action your lure is doing. Yeah, if, you're, if your lure doesn't have a good enough, a good action, is, yeah, not good. Absolutely. And getting to know your lures as well, guys. So like, I haven't fished the shiver sticks yet, but the guys were saying uh, they like to go on a really high cast in them. And as they drop down tail in first, yeah. they do like a slow shimmer as they drop down through the water column. Okay. And that's where they're getting most of the hits. Hits on that. So it's, the lures aren't just always hoi and wide. You, you've got to get to know what works in best conditions, okay. what kind of water depth and that. And I was checking out the guys in Australia the other day, and yeah. we sell a lot of Nomad lures. Last, the, you know, the high-end lure market's very specialized, but Nomad seems to be very popular. Just one step ahead. It is. Uh, they, they're certainly by far the top-selling high-end lure brand in the country. The particular model we're looking at here is like 750 Rand. What would be the attraction of spending almost four times the price? over something else. Yeah. Okay, so it can't just be the, the hook quality, yeah. can't just be the construction quality. It's got to be more than that. It's got to have something else. And the guys in Australia, the Nomad boys, were saying, uh, not the easiest to see, but basically these lures are made of a series of flat planes. So it angles around like that. And as it's got the various coatings here, it's literally flashing out, almost like a lighthouse. Okay. So visualize your lure dropping in that column, same as you had the shiver stick. But yeah, it's going bling, bling a lot further than most lures would. So hence the fish, if it's 20 meters away, there's more yeah. chance of it spotting my lure. So spending more money on a high-end lure can certainly make sense. Um, you cry when you throw them away. Definitely, but especially at that price. If you think how fewer hits we actually get yeah. on lures, having the best possible attraction certainly can be worth it. Um, if you're going up to a place like Gabon or something like that, you're spending 30K on the trip, Buy decent, decent lures. You can, eh? you can get some decent lures. You know, lures, you, yeah. you're chasing the fish of a lifetime, eh? If you're just going for shad, buy a spoon. You know, yeah. match, match the tackle to the to the target, I think, is always the idea. And then let's get back to paddle tails. Um, paddle tails, a lot of guys like throwing. And a cob factor ones, yeah, we got, we got the pink we spoke about. But what about a darker one or a more natural tone? What do you think there? Oh, you definitely, you've got to look at your darker tones and more natural tones, as you're saying. Especially if you're fishing cleaner water. Yep. Cleaner water, obviously the darker tones in the night, as I said earlier, I'd choose to fish moonlit night. I'd go something with a bit of a sparkle in to get, yep. your, to get that little bit of a reflect off it. Yeah, I, I, I'm assuming like I've quite in recent years the the ones with the gold or blue with the with the the tinsel type sparkle in them yeah. make sense. A lot of guys have latched onto those, and yeah. we're getting they're a little more natural. Um, going for spotties and that kind of thing as well with your smaller jerk minnows. Yeah, that kind of tone certainly gets more hits. You know, a spot is not always going to fall for a pink one. Correct. So it's certainly got a factor. The dark ones, I haven't tried yet, but the guy's saying like your harbors, isn't it? We've got a light okay. on, the, on the water. Yeah. The idea is to retrieve them fairly close to the top. So you're doing a silhouette. Okay. Because yeah. a lot of the time, the cob aren't always on the bottom with their slow retrieve. Yeah. They're actually hitting, especially the larger cob. Yeah. They like to hit from the bottom up. up. And uh, it's something worthwhile trying. So okay. an interesting. So we looked at the last selection of lures here and accessories. We haven't mentioned these little guys as well. They glow particularly well. The deep sea guys' glow is something that does factor in because of the depth. Correct. So you have to think about your glow. And what about headlamps? Uh, what brand of headlamp do you use? So I personally use a lead lenser. Mm -hmm. I find them brilliant guys, good guarantees. They put a decent amount of light out and they've got a good battery life. So one of the ones I use headlights, but I think you can get away with any headlight as long as it's producing enough light for you. Yeah, for, uh, uh, you know, I've, 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 I've always gone the slightly more budget route. Yes, yeah. And I must admit, they don't last. Um, if I get a second season out of one, I'm lucky. Yeah. You know, they, and they, they can be lost. I must admit, I do sometimes. As we know. On the, yeah, it, it happens. You know, know. You, you're packing up your tackle in the pouring rain. and Yeah, no, it happens. Um, but certainly lead lens are nice charging, quality components, reliable brand. And they're probably one of the best choices in South yeah. Africa. Wide spectrum of models. There's some that also just work on normal AAA batteries, so correct. you don't have to go the rechargeable route. And they're all also pretty well sealed. Yeah. Guys who like your Saragosas, the sealing also pretty good yeah. there. So get wet, get in the rain. Listen, I've had mine fall off my head into the sea, you it out, and it still works. You don't freak out. That's a different story. Yeah. But as we're wrapping that up, let's get to our featured product tonight Shimano Kariki brand. Right. Is that how you pronounce it? Kariki. What's interesting about, you know, a lot of the names we hear from Japan, we think they obscure, like yeah. uh, even some of the hearty rise rods and that. And even some like a Ichiban, 
Uh, there's, yeah. a, there's a the Okuma rod. They're actually all names for fish in Japanese. Correct. Um, Dorado and that kind of thing. So they're actually quite cool names. Yeah. And they're not just a strange Japanese thing. But the take on Japanese bread, um, this is a, a 20 pound uh, available from 10 pound all the way through to the heavier breaking strains. Very popular for deep sea yeah. guys. Um, the, we found the color changing one to be particularly effective. Okay. So every 10 meters you've got a color change. Okay. It doesn't just tell you how far you've cost, which it can do though, Correct. if you're a rocket yes, surfer. Yes, yeah. If you want to prove you're doing 100 meters plus, uh, this is one way of doing it. Um, but for the guys going, you know how far down your lure has gone? Yeah, vertically, yeah. Vertically. And I also find even for drop shotting in that, gives you a little bit of a gauge what your retrieve speed is. Yeah. You know, kind of you, you, you're winding the reel, but if you change it from one size reel to another, you sometimes don't always know, am I going slow yeah. enough? Different or gear ratio particularly reel. slow enough is, yeah. the, is the issue. Yeah. Um, so this gives you a bit of a visual indication as you're going, what's happening. 100%. And Japanese braids are a bit different to American spec braids. Uh, we can't quite compare apples to apples. apples yeah. um, when they say 20 pound in year, it's 20 pound. this thing's going to snap probably at 20, 20 pound. pound yeah. It's not going to give you 30 or 40 pound like some of the other ones would. And very different in, this, in their feel. Um, they all tend to be a lot more supple. So the lure casting guys, they enjoy that easy feel. Maybe not as abrasive resistant, but the stuff's well specced. Yeah. The guys targeting big fish worldwide, even things like yellowtail and tuna, yeah. Kariki is one of the braids the guys are choosing. Okay. And fantastic product. Um, it's a PE braid similar to most of the brands you got, but the coatings and the quality, you know Shimano when they put the name on a product? It's tested, it's proven. Even, but yeah. You don't get a bad batch, no, no, yeah. You don't 100% get not, yeah. And, a great product, and this is a giveaway this week. We need some shares, guys. You know, yeah, get out there, like and share, please. On our posts on the Facebook page, please share it. We need to grow the channel as best we can. And so next week, we'd like to announce the winner, and you can awesome. give us give us Brad a choice of try yourself, and you can tell us which breaking strain you want. 20, 30, 40 pound. Oh, nice. So they can got choose their breaking strain. You can choose your Perfect. breaking strain. Perfect. Give it a, your own review, and let us know. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Awesome. And uh, I know we didn't have any Q&A this week, yeah. but just a short one. A couple of weeks back, we had a guy saying, you know, he's bought all the gear and he goes fishing and there's no fish left yet. I, mean, I know we fished this weekend. We had a comp and the conditions were challenging. I mean, I, I did five hours fishing. I had two bumps. Yeah. I had no fish left yet. The yeah, Is that the case? No. No, no the, yeah. the fish yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm just going to tell to a local area. We've got an area called Ganubi just outside East London. It's probably the most heavily fished area in the East London no, district. Hands down, hands down. And yet I can go there any given day, I can catch blacktail, bluefish, muscle cracker still come up pretty frequently. And those are all resident fish species. Yeah. So yes, there are, there are lots of fish locally. And don't, don't lose motivation just because you go out and you, you have a dud day. That one bad session, don't you? The, the, the best anglers, the league guys, the national oaks have dull days. You can try your best to get something, doesn't always work. But what does work? What, what do you think leads you to being more successful? Uh, it's putting more hours in and starting to look at the conditions, the days you were successful, using that sort of, not data, I can't call it data, you know what I mean? I don't know, yeah. what do you think? I, I don't know, you know, I, I'm a married guy with kids, so, yeah, so, so more it's, hours it's, in has become less of a thing as I've got yes, older yeah, now. Yeah. I struggle with that. But I've, I've found the first step, if you just got into fishing in the first time, get to know your local. Get to know a spot or area of coastline this gully works like on a high yeah. tide when it's calm. That's my rough spot. Yeah. And the, that reef off the land there, I'm going to get hooked up. Yeah. You know, you're getting to know. Then you're going to know what baits work there. Like we had a weird thing. We, I fished red baits this weekend. Uh, red baits on the area of coast like Kiwani down that side. We used to catch bluefish on red bait. It is our top bait for bluefish. Yeah. Sand prawn as well. Up on the east coast, yeah, I've never caught a bluefish on red bait. No, it's more, no, we don't. My side of the East Coast, yeah, it's, well, it's all prawn. Yeah, prawn red, red, red bait will catch you a muscle cracker, but Correct. it won't catch you. So different areas, different baits, folks. Yeah. And move, hey? If you've got two, three casts in the same zone yeah. and nothing's happened, either go shorter cost or try the gully next door. You know, don't, don't just get plugging on this one spot the whole day. 100%. It's not going to work for you. And guys, most folks are happy to talk about their knowledge. Um, most guys, hey, can I come fishing with you? They'll share their knowledge. Um, Come join us in a club or an outing or something like that. Even chat to the guys in the shops here. They're, the Oaks are more than happy to share their spots. Uh, uh, in my experience, I've got about 200 spots 
in the, the district. So you were mentioning that, Jason. You know, uh, I, any given day I can walk down and I can say, mm, yeah, I got, within eyesight, I've got about eight spots I can choose from that I know will work and then they've, they've worked in the past. Yeah. So getting to know that, that knowledge is important and it shouldn't take years to acquire. So basically, don't fish in the same place every time. If it's working for you, cool. But always have a plan B and a plan C. When it stops not working for you, try somewhere else. And stay motivated, guys. You know, you never know when that 20 kg muscle crack is around the corner. That can be the next cost. So, so don't give up. Hang in there. And winter fishing generally is better than summer fishing. Yeah, in I'm, excited. I'm excited. I'm um, excited. Winter, we get the big fish. And the uh, fair weather fishermen stay home. Yeah, and we get colder, and, and, but, colder but it's And fine. we get colder, but we get bigger and bigger. And uh, we're chasing those personal bests all the time. Eh? So, so hang in there. And maybe, what, what about choosing what to target? If I'm a beginner, what do I target? You know, I'm, I talk about a 20 kg muscle cracker. Cracker, yes. Is that the first thing I'm going to target though? I'd say, I'd say no. You know what I mean? Start simple. Yeah. Start with your black tails, your zebras, your kalyun. You know, yeah. like, start simple, guys. If Depending if you're fishing off the surf, maybe a target a smaller cob. Things that are, there's more fish available. Absolutely, yeah. And, and also going, going light to tackle. Correct. You know, um, I was fishing at the beginning of this weekend, one of our staff members, and I, I couldn't put him into a fish, which is quite embarrassing because I'm only a pretty good kitty. But like a 12 foot setup that yes. you can cast a two ounce on, that's nice and easy. You can use it in gullies. It's easy to cast. It's still long enough. He's not going to hook the reef in front of him yeah. all the time. So don't go super heavy all the time. Um, smaller hooks like a 1-0, 2-0, you're going to catch most fish that bite. 100%. You know, so, so just rationalize. And often, even us, if we like to bag two or three fish that are edible, either for the pan or just to make us feel good, yeah. and then I go for my badge. Correct. Then I start looking for the 20 kg. So just build up your confidence and, and get going. I on quite that. enjoy grabbing my 11 foot to my little four or 5,000 spinning reel. Taking a light bag and just oh, for sure. hopping between the gullies and get some. No, you can, and now and again, you do get that fish that you were supposed to get on the heavy tackle. Yeah, for sure. And, and you can still land it. I 100%. mean, certainly if you're patient, yeah. you can land it. Yeah. But even going right down to like a bass top set, like a six, seven foot yeah. rod, you can cane the black tail on those. Correct. Um, half ounce, quarter ounce sinker. You can have small, some good fun, eh? Small red bag. Yeah. yeah, you can have a lot you of fun. Some good fun. And you can outfish us heavy tackle guys 100%, a lot of the yeah. time. So That is true. So to all the guys who are despondent out there, stay motivated. Stay fishing. Stay fishing. And get cold with us this winter. Yeah, we're excited. Okay, cool. Anyway, guys, thanks so much for joining us this evening. Dean from Untraceable Fishing and Don from Bulmoria Fishing Tackle. Please remember to like and subscribe and follow us on YouTube and have a look at Bulmoria Fishing on Facebook. Give them a like, give them a share. Until next time, this, this is, is Tackle, Tackle Tuesday. Tuesday.